Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. Here's Eddie Fedrick. Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Wednesday, 26 June 2024, and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. OECS Citizenship by Investment Programs agree to new minimum investment threshold. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so glad to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. Five OECS nations, including St. Lucia, have agreed to standardize their citizenship by investment programs. Effective July 1st, a minimum investment of $200,000 will be required to obtain citizenship through any of these programs. Moreover, these countries have agreed to bolster regulatory oversight. Eastern Caribbean nations offering citizenship by investment programs are moving forward with a standardized approach. According to a media release from the OECS, signatories Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Lucia have all agreed to implement a Memorandum of Agreement, MOA, aimed at cooperation and best practices. The key takeaway for potential investors is a new minimum investment threshold, effective July 1, 2024. Any applicant seeking citizenship through one of these programs will need to invest a minimum of U.S. $200,000. This applies to contributions to government funds, projects, or private developments within the participating countries. The agreement also prohibits discounting of this minimum investment amount. Market agents and developers are advised to report any attempts at undercutting the price to relevant authorities. Looking ahead, the OECS reports the establishment of an interim regulatory commission, This temporary body comprising representatives from each participating country, the OECS Commission, and the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank will pave the way for a permanent regional regulatory body. This commission will oversee the development and enforcement of regional standards for CBI programs, monitor compliance, investigate complaints, and facilitate information sharing. Having lost the Indian Walk Lengua electoral seat last Monday, the United National Congress, UNC, did a post-mortem of why it was defeated. The party has come up with several reasons, including the belief that Eid al-Adha celebrations could have cost them the election. CNC3's Radhika De Silva filed this report. While an analysis of votes in the Langwa Indian War by-elections by the EBC shows a 3% increase in voter turnout, the UNC says their research shows there's been a decrease in Muslim votes. And it's led Moruga MP Michelle Benjamin to draw this conclusion. Election day, um, June 17th, fell on a Muslim celebration of Eid. Idwadar, and our base support, which is the Muslim brothers and sisters in the electoral district of Lengua Indian Walk, um, which is basically comprised of three to four polling divisions, um, our base support would come out from. Um, it did not come out because they were involved in their different um, religious practices. In the four polling divisions where the UNC commands majority support, Muslims comprise of 75% of the voting population. Benjamin believes the PNM won Muslim votes by opening a Muslim cemetery in Barakpo as they used the state resources to campaign. I'm brought out somewhere close of their general election numbers by doing um, a WASA project, of which I would have called them out on. They also would have given out hampers, um, my sources told me it was to the tune of 1,600. The, um, the housing minister would have came down, Ms. Um, Regis, and I think grants was given out to the tune of average 1.7 million. 
CNC3 News reached out to several Muslims associated with the Periyang Asja Masjid, Princess Town Asja, and the Langwa Village TIA Masjid, who confirmed some Muslims were just too busy to vote on that day. But political analyst Dr. Bishnu Raghunath believes the UNC lost ground. The EBC says out of a population of 8,465 eligible voters, just over 36% voted in last Monday's by-election. Radhika De Silva, CNC3 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group. Underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Hurricane season is now upon us. So we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during the storm or hurricane. Especially if there are strong winds, rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. Two political scientists, meantime, say the opposition leader must quickly decide if she will capitalize on existing legislation and seek to have Dr. Ragbear's seat declared a vacant. And while some of the UNC's United Patriots slate say Dr. Ragbear had a right to vote whichever way he chose, a deputy political leader maintains he only managed to show his PNM petticoat. Much like politics in the game of chess, it's your move to follow your opponent, which is why political scientist Professor Hamid Ghani says opposition leader Kamla Prasad Bisesa has to decide how to treat with the insubordination of Dr. Rai Ragbear. There is legislation there. I don't know if she is going to invoke it. She certainly invoked it when she was prime minister to have Herbert Volney removed as the MP for St. Joseph. And um, the seat was declared vacant. Ghani was referencing the Crossing of the Floor Act and 49A of the Constitution, which facilitated the expulsion of Herbert Volney back in 2013. If Basad Bisesa does not treat with the breaking of ranks within her party, Ghani believes she will pave the way for more dissidents. I don't know if the UNC will go that, that route um, or if they will just allow things to ride and, and leave it as it is. What that may telegraph is that, well, okay, it's okay to disobey the party line because there are no consequences. Political scientist Dr. Bishnu Raghunath agrees, but says it's unlikely because... Once you have a a seat being declared vacant within the last year of the term, then you don't have a by-election. He goes further to say it's all but decided that Dr. Ragbear will not be chosen to represent the UNC in upcoming general elections. There is no way that Mr. Rai is going to ever get back a seat in the, well, to, to contest the election on behalf of the UNC. Um, Mr. Parry and Anika Haynes still possibly, depending on how they play their cards, be- Haynes Allen tells CNC3 News that while she was not at yesterday's parliamentary sitting, she has no issue with Dr. Ragbear's decision. She also reiterates that it's dangerous to suggest that people who disagree with the leadership do not belong in the party. And while Dr. Munilal warns that those who undermine the UNC will be dealt with appropriately, he denies that there was no caucus prior to the vote, as was claimed by Dr. Ragbear when he justified his action. But Parry echoed Dr. Dr. Rackbear's sentiment that he was not invited to any UNC caucus and says he only spoke for himself when he declared that he will follow the direction of the party's chief whip. Despite Dr. Rai Ragbear's claim he has his constituents backing, CNC3 found no support for the Komuto Manzanella MP in his constituency when they visited on Friday. The opposition MP voted with the PNM in support of the whistleblower legislation on June 21st, 2024. Chairman of the Sangre Grande Regional Corporation, Kenwin Phillip, told CNC3's Otto Carrington that UNC councillors no longer support the MP and have lost their respect for him. If I have that support to vote for Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright can't see my finger. 
Because I'm not going to vote for Mr. Rahe. If he is the only man fight to vote for, he's not going to get my vote. Because I don't get nothing from him. Upset and disrespected, these are the feelings expressed by constituents of Kumuto Manzanilla after their member of parliament, Dr. Rai Ragbir, broke ranks with opposition colleagues in the House of Representatives and voted for the government's Whistleblower Protection Bill 2024. Business owner Nefertari Kernahan described the MP's decision as vindictive, attributing it to his loss in the internal elections of the United National Congress. He just basically being very vindictive and petty by going against his party. And do you see this move as a betrayal of the party? Yes, it's a big betrayal. Mm-hmm. Big betrayal because at the end of the day, let's be real, and it will never go against. They, they, they stick together, they will never go against or vote against any bill. When a division was taken in the House of Representatives, all government MPs voted yes, while opposition UNC MPs, except Ragby, voted no. The final tally was 22 votes for and 15 against. Chairman of the Sangre Grande Regional Corporation, Kenwin Phillip, made it clear that UNC councillors at the corporation have withdrawn their support from MP Rai as a result. When I speak, I speak on behalf of all the councillors, all the persons in the region of Sangre Grande when um, MP Rai would have made that decision. When persons supported MP Rai, Yes, they did not support MP Rai as an individual. They supported the United National Congress. And that being said, MP Rai, MP Rai would have went against all the persons of Kumuto Manzanina. Constituent and supporter Travelin Sugrim says she has withdrawn her support as well, since she says her MP seems to have jumped ship. No, what support? How we can support he? We can support he? Because he betrayed me. And when it is, he's supposed to stand with the UNC, he jumped chip. CNC3 News understands that some constituents will be heading to the MP's office on Tuesday to protest Friday's decisions. Otto Carrington, CNC3 News. Unemployment rate in the Bahamas now 9.9%. More in this ZNS News item. On the heels of the Bahamas Statistical Institute's report showing the country's unemployment rate lowering to 9.9% at the end of 2023, the country's Labour Minister, the Honourable Pia Glover-Roll, says the government continues its work in lowering the overall unemployment rate in the country. Glover-Roll noted that through the many initiatives of the Department of Labor, some 1,517 Bahamians have been placed on jobs in the past year. Most of the past 20 years, the unemployment rate has basically hovered in the double digits. And in fact, our administration, the Davis administration, is actually responsible for bringing unemployment down to our lowest rates since I think about 20, 2008. And of course, we intend to continue to build on that track record of success by implementing uh, effective economic and labor policies as they must go hand in hand to create opportunities for Bahamians. Well, the Minister of Labor notes that it's the first time the unemployment rate has been in single digits in many years. She's also particularly pleased to witness the impact of government's labor policies on youth employment. As the number of our unemployed youth decreases by 1,475 in the fourth quarter of 2023, that speaks to a great improvement in our youth employment rate. And moving forward, I am pleased to hear the Bahamas National Statistical Institute embrace a new methodology, which includes the release of labor data every quarter. Um, We anticipate even more positive employment news as a result. And we, we know that there will naturally be highs and lows. There will naturally be an ebb and flow as cyclical employment patterns and the impact of the large scale projects that affect employment numbers on a day to day basis uh, are rolled out. But we do anticipate that the numbers will remain positive in the foreseeable future. <music> I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so glad to see. 
Tillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. 